Well, hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com, and today I want to show off some betacochina, talk about how to care for them, and uh, yeah, let you see these amazing, beautiful little nano wild type bettas. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's a couple of males that I caught in sparring action. So we'll watch them for a little while um, while I tell you about these fish and how to take care of them and things. As you can see, they have these bright glowing blue eyes when they turn correctly and the light reflects off. They're absolutely stunning. They're, they're really bright like fairy blue, kind of gorgeous looking eyeballs. Little lamp eye bettas. <laughs> um, Anyway, I want to talk about this fish. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about it. The first is that these fish are really hard to feed. I haven't found that true. These are eating flake food without any problem. Um, they'll start eating pellets here pretty soon too, as long as I you know, kind of crumble them up. They'll nibble at rapashi. They're learning to eat rapashi. They love little fruit flies. They love baby brine shrimp, but I haven't found them difficult to it takes them a little while to recognize a new food as something they should eat but once they do they go right to it and they start becoming pretty um, I don't want to say aggressive feeders but they know where the food's gonna come in and they're there waiting for it when I lift the lid up which brings me to the other point about them being shy that hasn't been my experience of course the first couple weeks they were shy but as soon as they started associating me and me lifting the lit up with food and all that then the shyness went away um, aggression what you saw there is about as aggressive as they get uh, a couple dominant feeling fish will spar with each other it's mostly display there'll be a tiny little bit of back and forth and then they'll quit it's not sustained you can definitely keep these fish together it's it's not a problem if there's plenty of plants so they can get away from each other when they're not feeling uh, like uh, like displaying and, and if one of them is dominated it can kind of get away now that might be a problem if all you had is like two males in a tank or if the tank was really small and there wasn't space for them to get away or it wasn't planted so they couldn't find a spot to go you know get out of the line of sight of the more aggressive male but they're nothing like Betta Splendens. You can definitely keep a group together. They appreciate lots of plants. In the wild, they come from these parts of the streams. They're black water streams, super soft, very acidic water, like maybe three, four, five pH, really, really acidic. Um, and they're really dark streams, not a lot of plants, but lots of leaf litter, lots of fallen branches and roots and stuff like that and they kind of hang out in this deep leaf litter and that's where they live kind of like kind of like rivulus would in south america or apistos in south america do so they appreciate quite a bit of covers you can see there's a lot of plants in here there's a sponge filter and what i like about this sponge filter is the pipe that goes to the top ends about oh two inches from the top of the water column and so I can bubble that thing pretty hard without creating a strong current these guys come from pretty slow moving sluggish water they don't appreciate a strong current they'll get battered around and we'll have to fight real hard to keep up on it so I can have a sponge filter that's almost to the top of the tank run it pretty hard and get good filtration without causing tons of, of water flow or current in the tank and they seem to really appreciate that um, as I said they come from soft acidic water extreme black water habitats that does not mean unlike you're gonna read online that you have to keep them in really acidic water conditions as long as your water is kept clean and there's no ammonia or nitrite then you should be fine in acidic water Ammonia simply doesn't really exist. It's converted to a less toxic chemical called ammonium. And so these guys in nature are not exposed to ammonia and nitrites and things like that. So they are very sensitive to them. But if you have a well-established, mature tank that's stable, well-planted, things like that, and you're not going to get fluctuations of ammonia in there, then you should be just fine especially with these these have been um, when they first come in they're very delicate and you do kind of have to medicate them when they're first imported 
or you'll have problems. They need help uh, getting used to the bacteria in our water and things like that. But once they're over the first couple weeks, they're pretty much rock solid as long as the water is kept chemically clean. So these have been through that. I've medicated them. They're doing great and they've been pretty rock solid for me. Tank mates for these guys, they're a species that you might want to keep by itself or if you do keep tank mates with them, make it so that it's a small peaceful fish that isn't super fast. In other words, not something that's going to outcompete these guys for food. They do learn where the food comes in and they do go and kind of wait for it and get excited, but they aren't super quick to eat. They take a while. They'll follow the food item, kind of stock up to it, and then eat it, and then move to the next one. And it'll take them a few seconds to eat each food item. And there are other species that would already have eaten all the food in that amount of time. So keep them with something like, um, I think Bararis species would be good with these. I think some like rosy loaches, some of the pygmy catfish, things like that would be good, but nothing that's really a fast eater. I wouldn't keep these with like pseudomilgill uh, blue eye rainbow fish or anything like that. Look at that stunning fish. So you know that's a male because it has the bright blue kind of spot on its side. That's how you know male from female. I'm about 80% accurate on sexing these. The females have a lot of color too. So it is a little difficult to sex them with 100% accuracy, but if you want a pair um, or you want an even sex ratio or, or whatever, let me know and I'll do my best and we'll be about 80% accurate. So don't hate me if it's not 100% accurate. These guys are not as easy to sex as, as a lot of other species, but I can do pretty well for you. So that's kind of the basics on these guys. I find them... Once they're first uh, through the first week or two after being imported and have been through some medications and things, I find them to be rock solid. So I really like these a ton. Look how beautiful they are. They're called wine red bettas is the common name, although betacochina is what we call them because there's some other species like brown orum and things like that that, that look very similar. Um, but they're aptly named. Cochina means basically bright red or scarlet. Um, in the Latin, so that's why they're called Beta Cochina. Now, I have not bred these yet. I've only had them for oh, about a month, I guess now, maybe a little less than a month. But I do know that they're a little, they're a bubble nester. They like to have a place like. A, floating little container they can breed in. Online it always sell, says, uh, use film canisters, those little black film canisters. The problem is no one uses film anymore. Like we all have digital cameras. So where are you going to find film canisters? But you can use um, extruded black pipe from your home supply store, like the black drip system pipe that's about I don't know, an inch wide, something like that. Cut that into lengths and float a bunch of that in there. They'll love that. Uh, you can use flower pots and clay pots and things like that. So some floating, some sinking. Nothing too far from the surface. And if it's floating, they're more likely to spawn in it. Again, this is anecdotal. This is stuff that I've read or talked to people about. I have not myself bred them yet. Anyway... Take a look at these beauties. Uh, that's a male there. You can see that bright blue spot on him, that male in the back. And the one in front is a male that's not in, it's a subdominant male. So he's got the kind of horizontal stripes, but you can still see that bright blue spot on him, which as far as I know, means he's a male. Anyway, beautiful little fish. Um, if you get a chance at some point in your life, keep these. They are brilliant. Oh, and they jump. Keep a lid on your tank, people. Aren't those something? Beta Cochina, one of my favorites. Uh, absolutely stunning, and I'm just thrilled at how well they're doing. It's uh, wonderful to see them thriving and glowing with color. I think they're amazing. Anyway, if you like this stuff, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, liking, sharing, hitting notification bells, all that schmaz that us YouTubers are always begging you to do, I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.